Almost 100 judges abandoned courtrooms in Jamaica and in sport, Trinidad-based football club still in contention for the Caribbean Cup. I'm Ricardo Roberts and this is Caribbean in 10 for Tuesday, February 13th. I'll be back with the details in just a moment. The age-old standard of refereeing debate in the Premier League is back. Or is there a conspiracy or corruption in the league, as some may say? Vass, Vass is unmarked here, and he stayed onside. It's Daniel Vass, wonderful chance, and he scores! Has the refereeing been that bad in the league so far this season? It, it's been bad, not to the point that I say it's a conspiracy, which is what he's leading to. Uh, there have been since a game where Arsenal have done that. Welcome back to Sanks to Zank TV, and I am your host, B. So we're just going to kick it off and start off with me. Yes. We're reminiscing. Um, there's so many moments, and the ones that stick out to me the most are, I'm a foodie, so food, um, a little social conscious going on, so a little poetry, and anyone that is, well, they have to sound good, though, um, <laughs> acoustics, <laughs> and um, for the most part, Jamaica's court system grinded to a halt yesterday after 97 judges abandoned their courtrooms. The action was meant to highlight concerns about separation of powers, judicial independence and accountability following comments made by Prime Minister Andrew Holness relating to the appointment of Acting Chief Justice Brian Skies. Holness drew criticism after saying at Sky's swearing-in ceremony that actions that bring results will determine the assumption of the role of the Chief Justice. TVJ's Herman Green reports. A statement from the Court Management Services on Monday afternoon outlined that with the principle of the separation of powers and the independence of the judiciary seemingly under threat, an urgent meeting was necessary. The statement said the concerns also extended to what appears to be other instances of interference by the legislative and executive branches of government. Several individuals and groups believe the acting appointment is also unconstitutional. While being inconvenienced Monday morning herself as an attorney, President of the Bar Association of Jamaica, Jacqueline Cummings, believes the meeting was needed to address several escalating issues. I think it is a combination of wanting to, to all meet together and, and determine the, the, the way forward. It has to do with, I suppose, working conditions, the perceived um, independence of the judiciary being trampled upon, and the salaries, the, 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 what is happening with regards to their lack of judicial clerks. I think those are the major issues. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck said he was surprised by the action of the judges as he thought they were meeting at a parish level. At least three homes were evacuated and several cracks appeared on the road as a mud volcano in South Trinidad erupted early today. Members of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service and the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management have converged on the site of the Devil's Wood Yard mud volcano in Hindustan, New Grant, which began erupting at around 4 a.m. The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management said it's closely monitoring the situation and the EMA is mobilizing a team to visit the site to conduct air testing. Agriculture Minister Clarence Rambarat said there was still seismic activity at the site and the size of the mud flow was growing. The first recorded eruption of the mud volcano occurred in 1852. There was another eruption 30 years later, but it has been dormant since then with small cones emitting mud and gas over the years. And staying in the Twin Island Republic, a visitor died after being crushed by a music truck in the capital of Port of Spain during Carnival Monday. 77-year-old Kingsley Rodia, who was visiting from Florida, was behind a three-ton music truck on Victoria Square when the vehicle reversed to negotiate a bend and struck the man. He fell and the wheel rolled over him, causing massive chest injuries. He was pronounced dead at hospital. Guyana will have an international team representing it when the border dispute with Venezuela goes before the International Court of Justice. 
Foreign Affairs Minister Carl Greenwich says the Attorney General's chambers will not be dealing with the matter as it requires expertise in specific areas. The government has budgeted an estimated 15 million U.S. dollars for legal fees. Last month's United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres announced he was referring the decades-old border controversy to the ICJ. Guyana welcomed the decision, but Venezuela has said it wants the union or the union, the UN good offices process to have another go at finding a solution to the dispute. And stay with us, your midday sport is next. <laughs> Football tops our midday sports. The hopes of Trinidad-based club Central FC for Caribbean Cup glory are still alive following the 3 0 whipping of Haiti's Racing Club in the Dominican Republic over the weekend. The Trinidad side was on the doorstep of being dumped out of the cup following a 2 0 loss to Jamaica's Portmore United. Ruskin Mark of Sea Sport has the details. The Central Sharks jumped to an early lead when the ball was worked nicely into the path of Makano, the former Sawa Jablote star, and the TNT International got his angles right, beating the keeper's despairing dive to make it one to nothing in the 11th minute. It was a deserved lead for the Sharks, who dominated the early stages of this contest. And just before the half, Central would double up, and it was that man Makano again on spot to finish off Racing, who desperately needed a win to stay alive in the competition. Also, 2 to nothing at the half to the Central Sharks. They would hold that lead through to the interval and set themselves up for more in the second half. They would seal the deal four minutes after the break, when another former Jablote product in Tyrun Charles sank the Haitians when his shot was deflected in for 3 to nothing in the 49th. Game, set and match for the Sharks, who can still secure a place in the top tier with a win in Sunday's clash with host club Atlantico FC, who have four points, one more than Central, heading into that contest. And over to cricket now, Guyana Jaguars brushed aside USA by seven wickets in Antigua yesterday to end their losing streak in the regional Super 50. Entering the Group B contest on the heels of defeats to Jamaica Scorpions and English County Kent, Jaguars returned to their winning ways by easily chasing down a modest 145 to win with almost 20 overs to spare. Opener Chandra Paul Hemraj top scored with an entertaining 64 of 59 deliveries, while veteran left-hander Shivnarain Chandra Paul contributed with 39. Earlier, right-handed opener Jaskaran Mahaltra top scored with 80 but was without support as USA were bundled out for just 144 in the 44th over. Mahaltra faced 116 balls and counted six fours and a six, but was one of only three batsmen in double figures and the only one to pass 20. He put on 39 for the second wicket with former Windies batsman Xavier Marshall. After five wickets perished for 19 runs, he added a further 40 for the seventh wicket with Adil Bati. That's Caribbean in 10. Join us again at 6.30 for Caribbean Newsline. Good afternoon.